Let's take a deep dive into Silhouette Studio's transform panel in V5. This is my second favorite panel in all of Silhouette Studio. There are so many useful tools and features in this panel. It's absolutely amazing whether you're creating your own designs or tweaking something that was pre-made. Hi, I'm Brenda Lambert. I'm a TJC licensed instructor for Silhouette. You found your way to Silhouette Success and I do hope that you're going to join our little community. We would absolutely love to have you. Now, if at any point in this video you find some of the information useful, please hit the like button. And if you have any questions, be sure to ask in the comments. For more in-depth conversations, you can head over to Facebook, join the group. We'd love to see you there as well. Now, there's a lot to cover in this video, so let's get started. This is the transform panel in Silhouette Studio V5. It does say transform underneath. It has three vertical bars with a horizontal line through them. Let's click on that and open the panel up. Inside the transform panel, you will see that there are several different tabs to work with. The first one is align. Then you have scale, rotate, move, and shear. I do believe shear is in an upgraded version. I will have to double check that and I will try to list that on the screen once it's published. We are looking at the align tool to start. And if we select one of these elements, you will see that you also have your align tools up on the quick access toolbar. So this makes it super easy to get to all of these options, which are the same as these options here. If your element is selected, you can also go up to object and click on that tab. A line is right here and you can select from this menu as well. It's all just a matter of preference. It's whatever is easiest for you to remember. Now, when using these buttons, you do have to have your element selected. So let's click on the rectangle. If we click on center, that's going to bring the rectangle to the center of your design mat. Now we can select both of these elements and click this center button. This one is center to page, this is center. So with both elements selected, we can click on that and it's going to align these two perfectly. The circle is now right in the middle of the rectangle. Next, we have horizontal alignment. We can align to the left, we can align centers, or we can align to the right. Vertical alignment, we can align to the top, the middle, or the bottom. And then we have distribute down at the bottom. We are going to need more elements to work with this. So let's select both of these, go up to our quick access toolbar and duplicate. Now I'm going to set one rectangle way over here and I'm going to put this one over here. Select all of these objects and click on space horizontal. It's going to move the middle objects. In this case, it is these circles so that each one of these elements is spaced out evenly. Now we can do the same thing vertically. We'll just place our elements vertically instead of horizontally. We can select all of the pieces and space vertically. Now all of these pieces are equally spaced apart. The next tab in the transform panel is scale and you can scale elements to 33%, 50%. It's at 100% right now. We can go up to 200% or 300% just by clicking. So let's select our rectangle and click on 33% and now it's one third of its original size. If we click on 200%, it has now doubled in size. You can also use the scale slider here, decide what percentage you would like it at, and then click on apply. Or you can enter your width and your height here. You can also lock your aspect ratio. Once these numbers are entered, you can click on apply here as well. I typically do not use this portion of the transform panel. I like to just scale using the handles on the corners or the sides or enter my width and height up at top. The lock aspect ratio button is here as well. I find that using the quick access toolbar for this feature is just easier for me. If you prefer to use it in the transform panel, 
that is totally up to you. Next up we have rotate and I do use this one quite a bit. If we have our element selected, we can rotate to 90 degrees, to 180 degrees, or to 270 degrees. And if you have any doubt as to what number you want to rotate to, you want to look at this little green dot here and see where it's pictured on this diagram. I am rotated to 270 degrees right now and my green dot is right here. With a rectangle, 90 degrees and 270 degrees are going to look exactly the same, but if your design is not symmetrical, this will make a bigger difference. You can also use the custom slider for this. You can use this green dot and just drag it along until it's rotated to the amount you want. If you've played around with an element and you decide that you don't really want it rotated, you just click on zero and it's right back to where you started from. Now underneath that we have rotate by. We have 45, 90, 180, negative 90, and negative 45. And we also have the custom slider here. And once again, if we don't want this to be upside down, we can just click on rotate to zero degrees and it's going to bring it right back up to where we started from. You can find the rotate options up in your object tab at the top. All of the options are right here for you. The next tab in the transform panel is move and we're going to move by and enter a distance. We can also move to an XY point on the grid. I do use move by quite a bit if I need things to be equally distant from the edges. There's a perfect example in my card making video and I will link that in the description. Let's grab a line from the drawing tools. I'm going to hold down my shift key and draw that out so I know that it is straight up and down. And I'm going to duplicate this so there is one on each side of the card. Let's move these and line them up so that they are perfectly aligned with the edges of the rectangle. Now I can enter a distance here, let's say 1.0. That's going to move each line by one inch. I have my increments set to inches. If you have yours set to centimeters, then it would move by one centimeter. Now I can select a line and click on any of these buttons and it's going to move it in that direction. Let's move this one over to the right. You can see it is now one inch away from the edge and I can click on this one, move it over to the left and it's going to pull it in one inch to the left. Now each of these lines are equally distant from the edges of the rectangle. When I use this in the other video, I was making a trifold card. And of course my measurements were a little bit different, but the concept is the same. Now let's look at move two. We have our X axis, we have our Y axis. We can enter numbers here and we can pick which point is going to be centered at that point. So right now I have the top left corner selected, which means the top left corner of my element is going to be placed at whatever number I put in these boxes. Let's select our element and enter one for each of these and click on apply. You can see that moves the top left corner, which is what I have selected at one inch from the top and one inch from the left. Now, if we want our bottom right corner, to be placed down here, we would make sure our element is selected, change our center point to the bottom right corner, change both of these numbers to 11, and click apply. Now it's going to be in the opposite corner with this corner of our element lined up with the numbers that we entered. If we wanted this element centered exactly in the middle of our media, we would click on the center point, enter six and six and apply. Now this is right in the middle of our design page or we could have selected this here center to page and it would have done the same exact thing. You can also find all of these options in the quick access toolbar. You have your move tool here and you can enter your distance 
and your arrows are here and you have your X and Y axis here and you have your center point here. And we are now going to move on to the shear tab. In the shear tab, you have horizontal shear, you have vertical shear, and each of them have the same increments. You can choose negative 30, negative 15, 0, 15, or 30, and then you have a custom slider for each. With your element selected, you can click through each of these and see the way it is transformed. It's taking this rectangle and tilting it on an angle. And again, this is horizontal shear. Let's bring it back to zero. and We can take a look at the vertical shear and see the difference. When we're using horizontal shear, the sides of the rectangle are tilted. When we're using vertical shear, the top and bottom sides are angled while the sides remain straight. And there are quite a few options and you can use them together and come up with all kinds of crazy shapes. Let's set everything back to zero. And that has changed the dimensions of my rectangle, but that's okay. The next thing in the shear tab is show shear handles. And when this box is checked, these handles pop up. You have one on each side and you can grab these and adjust your shape however you want it. And that's a lot of fun to play around with. And if you have some text, you can use this to create italics as well if that's not an option in the font that you're using. So much goodness in just one panel. I forgot to mention in the beginning that my absolute favorite panel in Silhouette Studio is the Modify panel, and I will be covering that soon, so stick around. Click the subscribe button so that you will be notified when that video drops. Now go create something amazing and I'll see you in the next video.